Chapter 22 Then Joshua called together the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. He told them, You have done as Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you, and you have obeyed every order I have given you. You have not deserted the other tribes, even though the campaign has lasted for such a long time. You have been careful to obey the commands of the Lord your God up to the present day. And now the Lord your God has given the other tribes rest, as he promised them. So go home now to the land Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the east side of the Jordan River. But be very careful to obey all the commands and the law that Moses gave to you. Love the Lord your God, walk in all his ways, obey his commands, be faithful to him, and serve him with all your heart and all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them home. Now Moses had given the land of Bashan to the half-tribe of Manasseh east of the Jordan. The other half of the tribe was given land west of the Jordan. As Joshua sent them away, he blessed them and said, Share with your relatives back home the great wealth you have taken from your enemies. Share with them your large herds of cattle, your silver and gold, your bronze and iron, and your clothing. So the men of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh left the rest of Israel at Shiloh in the land of Canaan. They started the journey back to their own land of Gilead, the territory that belonged to them according to the Lord's command through Moses. But while they were still in Canaan, Before they crossed the Jordan River, Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh built a very large altar near the Jordan River at a place called Geliloth. When the rest of Israel heard they had built the altar at Geliloth west of the Jordan River in the land of Canaan, the whole assembly gathered at Shiloh and prepared to go to war against their brother tribes. First, however, they sent a delegation led by Phinehas, son of Eleazar the priest. They crossed the river to talk with the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. In this delegation were ten high officials of Israel, one from each of the ten tribes, and each a leader within the family divisions of Israel. When they arrived in the land of Gilead, they said to the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, The whole community of the Lord demands to know why you are betraying the God of Israel. How could you turn away from the Lord and build an altar in rebellion against him? Was our sin at Peor not enough? We are not yet fully cleansed of it, even after the plague that struck the entire assembly of the Lord. And yet today you are turning away from following the Lord. If you rebel against the Lord today, he will be angry with all of us tomorrow. If you need the altar because your land is defiled, then join us on our side of the river where the Lord lives among us in his tabernacle, and we will share our land with you. But do not rebel against the Lord or draw us into your rebellion by building another altar for yourselves. There is only one true altar of the Lord our God. Didn't God punish all the people of Israel when Achan, a member of the clan of Zerah, sinned by stealing the things set apart for the Lord? He was not the only one who died because of that sin. Then the people of Reuben, God, and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered these high officials. The Lord alone is God. The Lord alone is God. We have not built the altar in rebellion against the Lord. If we have done so, do not spare our lives this day. But the Lord knows, and let all Israel know too, that we have not built an altar for ourselves to turn away from the Lord nor will we use it for our burnt offerings or grain offerings or peace offerings. If we have built it for this purpose, may the Lord himself punish us. We have built this altar because we fear that in the future your descendants will say to ours, What right do you have to worship the Lord, the God of Israel? The Lord has placed the Jordan River as a barrier between our people and your people. You have no claim to the Lord, and your descendants may make our descendants stop worshiping the Lord. So we decided to build the altar, not for burnt sacrifices, but as a memorial. It will remind our descendants and your descendants that we, too, have the right to worship the Lord at his sanctuary with our burnt offerings, sacrifices, and peace offerings. Then your descendants will not be able to say to ours, You have no claim to the Lord. If they say this, our descendants can reply, Look at this copy of the Lord's altar that our ancestors made. It is not for burnt offerings or sacrifices. 
It is a reminder of the relationship both of us have with the Lord. Far be it from us to rebel against the Lord or turn away from Him by building our own altar for burnt offerings, grain offerings, or sacrifices. Only the altar of the Lord our God that stands in front of the tabernacle may be used for that purpose. When Phinehas the priest and the high officials heard this from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, they were satisfied. Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the priest, replied to them, Today we know the Lord is among us, because you have not sinned against the Lord as we thought. Instead, you have rescued Israel from being destroyed by the Lord. Then Phinehas, son of Eleazar the priest, and the ten high officials left the tribes of Reuben and Gad in Gilead, and returned to the land of Canaan to tell the Israelites what had happened. And all the Israelites were satisfied and praised God, and spoke no more of war against Reuben and Gad. The people of Reuben and Gad named the altar Witness, for they said, It is a witness between us and them that the Lord is our God too.